Hair colour is a job that can be insanely complex or relatively easy. Everything's going to hinge on the quality of your hair selection, so make sure you've taken the time to get a good selection together. If you don't know how to do it, take a look at some of our selection tutorials elsewhere in the site. Now, I've already got a good hair selection for this image, and we're going to change this hair colour to a nice orangey red. So I need to load my selection first, so I'll go to Select, Load Selection, and I'll load up the selection channel that I've created here called Hege Hair. You'll see I've got another one there for another tutorial which we'll have a look at later on, and I'll say OK. Alright, I've got my selection loaded, and now I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Now this type of adjustment layer is called a fill layer, and it's going to be filled with colour. So I'll go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Colour, I'll say OK, and I get presented with a colour picker. Now I'll just drag this down a little bit so we can see as much of the image as possible while we do this. I'll just pull up the slider so I get my colour intensity. And I'll choose the orangey red tone that I'm looking for. Somewhere around about there looks pretty good, I think. Something really nice and intense. Yeah. And say OK. Alright, now this looks dreadful, of course, but hey, look at that selection. Isn't that beautiful? The trick here is to now switch the blending mode from normal to what is going to become one of your very best friends. It's called soft light mode. Soft light mode, you nearly always use this when you're changing hair colours because it gives a lovely blend between the underlying luminosity values with the new colour. Now as you can see, it's insanely strong this orange colour, but that looks quite convincing. Uh, if you want to adjust the colour so it's not quite so strong, hey, no problem. You've used an adjustment layer, so you can double click on the thumbnail and you can now adjust the colour dynamically and you can see the changes as you change the lighting intensity or even the colour if you wish to. Very very easy and very very flexible. There's quite a few different ways of changing colour among them using a hue and saturation layer but I think this way gives you the best results and the best information as you're making your changes. It's very very handy and very flexible. I'll put that back to that bright orange, just adjust the lightness a little bit of it and if you still need further adjustment, final things, opacity can be changed. That often has a good effect, particularly when you've got a good original layer of dark brown hair or light brown hair. It'll match in quite nicely. If there are a few little artifacts that need to be cleaned up, and I'm thinking of things like this, you may get a colour tone or a colour halo is going to appear in the shadows. Now that's natural because it's picked up the original colour tone and colour shadow from the original hair colour. So it may look alright, it may not be a problem. But if it is a problem, the best thing to do is to get in nice and close, take a selection tool, like a lasso tool, and just make a selection around the worst parts of that halo like so. Click on your layer mask for the color layer and then use image adjustments levels. What you're going to do here is you're going to choke this mask a little bit so it'll start to get rid of that halo effect. Not too much, just a little bit just to clean it away. There we go. I'll just drag the mid-tone slider and that just kills off that halo a little bit without losing it completely. And We'll say OK. I'll deselect, zoom out, and I think we can say hair colour job done.